Hello, this is Pastor Jones. Wanted to spend maybe a little bit more than five minutes with you this morning. I read something to the congregation on Easter Sunday morning that so touched the hearts and lives of the people that sat in these pews. I wanted to share it with you and put it in YouTube form so you could enjoy it uh, anytime you'd like. It's entitled, What Was in Jeremy's Egg? And it deals with the message of the resurrection. I want to read it to you today as our devotion and pray that it will touch your heart. Jeremy was born with a twisted body and a slow mind. At the age of 12, he was still in second grade, seemingly unable to learn. His teacher, Doris Miller, often became exasperated with him. He would squirm in his seat, drool, and make grunting noises. At other times, he spoke clearly and distinctly, as if a spot of light had penetrated the darkness of his brain. Most of the time, however, Jeremy irritated his teacher. One day, she called his parents to come to St. Teresa's for a consultation. As the forester sat quietly in the empty classroom, Doris said to them, Jeremy really belongs in a special school. It isn't fair to him to be with younger children who don't have learning problems. Why, there is a five-year gap between his age and that of the other students. Miss Forrester cried softly into a tissue while her husband spoke. Miss Miller, he said, there's no school of that kind nearby. It would be a terrible shock for Jeremy if we had to take him out of this school. We know he really likes it. Doris sat for a long time after they left, staring at the snow outside the window. Its coldness seemed to creep into her soul. She wanted to sympathize with the foresters. After all, their only child had a terminal illness, but it wasn't fair to keep him in her class. She had 18 other youngsters to teach, and Jeremy was a distraction. Furthermore, he would never learn to read and write. Why waste any more time trying? As she pondered the situation, guilt washed over her. Oh God, she said, here am I complaining when my problems are nothing compared to this poor family. Please help him to be more patient. Help me to be more patient with Jeremy. From that day on, she tried harder to ignore Jeremy's noises and blank stares. Then one day, he limped to her desk, dragging his bag behind him. I love you, Miss Miller, he exclaimed, loud enough for the whole class to hear. The other students snickered and Doris' face turned red. She stammered, why, why, that's very nice, Jeremy. Now, please take your seat. Spring came, and the children talked excitingly about the coming Easter. Doris told them the story of Jesus, and then to emphasize the idea of life springing forth, she gave each of the children a large plastic egg. Now, she said to them, I want you to take this home and bring it back tomorrow with something inside that shows new life. Do you understand? Yes, Miss Miller, the children exclaimed enthusiastically, all except for Jeremy. He just listened intently. His eyes never left her face. He did not even make his usual noises. Had he understood what she had said about Jesus' death and resurrection? Did he understand the assignment? Perhaps she could call his parents and explain the project. That evening, kitchen, Doris' kitchen sink stopped up. She called the landlord and waited an hour for him to come by and unclog it. After that, she still had to stop for groceries, iron a blouse, and prepare a vocabulary test for the next day. She completely forgot about phoning Jeremy's parents. The next morning, 19 children came to school laughing and talking as they placed their eggs in a large wicker basket on Miss Miller's desk. After they completed their math lesson, it was time to open the eggs. In the first egg, Doris found a flower. Oh yes, a flower is certainly a sign of new life, she said. When plants peek through the ground, we know that spring is here. A small girl in the front row waved her arm. That's my egg, Miss Miller, she called out. The next egg contained a plastic butterfly, which looked so real. Doris held it up. 
We all know that a caterpillar changes and grows into a beautiful butterfly. Yes, that is new life too. Little Judy smiled proudly and said, Miss Miller, that one's mine. Next, Doris found a rock with moss on it. She exclaimed that moss too showed life. Billy spoke up from the back of the classroom. My daddy helped me, he beamed. Then Doris opened the fourth egg. She gasped. The egg was empty. Surely it must be Jeremy's, she thought to herself. And of course, he did not understand her instructions. If only she had not forgotten to phone his parents. Because she didn't want to embarrass him, she quickly set the egg aside and reached for another. Suddenly, Jeremy spoke up. Miss Miller, aren't you going to talk about my egg? Flustered, Doris replied, but Jeremy, your egg is empty. He looked into her eyes and said softly, yes, but Jesus' tomb was empty too. Time stopped. When she could speak again, Doris asked, do you know why the tomb was empty? Oh yes, Jeremy said. Jesus was killed and put in there. Then his father raised him up. The resale bell, recess bell rang. While the children excitedly ran out to the schoolyard, Doris cried. The cold inside her melted completely away. Three months later, Jeremy died. Those who paid the respect at the funeral home were surprised to see 19 plastic eggs sitting on top of the casket and all of them were empty. This is Pastor Jones saying, I hope this spoke volumes into your heart and life today about the preciousness and the wonderfulness of the resurrection of Christ. Until we see you again, God bless.